Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to look at phase and coherence. So let's get started. Now we're going to kick off this subtopic on interference by looking at phase and coherence. And this is something you would have seen in higher physics. So it starts by saying that interference occurs when coherent waves overlap. So what do we mean by coherent waves? Well, it says that waves are said to be coherent if they have the same frequency, wavelength and speed. And it says that if two waves are emitted from the same source, it is likely that they will have the same frequency, wavelength and speed, and will therefore be coherent. This cannot be said for two waves emitted from different sources, however. And we say that when two waves are overlapping, the term phase can be used to describe how in tune they are. So you might remember from higher physics that two waves are said to be completely in phase when the crest of one matches up with the crest of the other or trough of one matches up with the trough of the other. So here you can see we've got two waves overlapping where the crests match up and the troughs match up as well. And you also might remember that two waves are said to be completely out of phase when the crest of one matches up with the trough of the other. So here you can see we've got the crest of one wave matching up with the trough of the other. And it says the coherence of waves can also be defined in terms of the phase difference between them. And we say that two waves are coherent if they have a constant phase relationship. So if you're asked what it means for two waves to be coherent, I would go for this one here and saying that they have a constant phase relationship. You could also mention they have the same frequency, wavelength and speed as well. And it says that this phase difference can be zero, as in two waves that are in phase, or non-zero, as long as the relationship for the phase stays the same. So in terms of speed, you could say you don't want one wave to be able to catch up with another wave. They need to have the same speed. And we don't want one wave to have a higher frequency than the other because that would cause the phase difference to change and therefore they wouldn't have a constant phase relationship. Now I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you visualise the interference of waves. Now we have a term for the addition of waves which is called superposition of waves. So you'll see here we have two boulders on cliff edges and we've got some water with a fish in the middle. So if I click play the two boulders drop into the water and we get two wave patterns produced. And you might have seen in the middle there we get this interference pattern where the two waves overlap with each other. So I'll just show you that again. So we have the adding together of two waves in the middle point here. Now notice how the two waves don't have the same amplitude because the two boulders are not the exact same size. So the two waves created are not going to have the same amplitude. And therefore we don't get complete what we call constructive interference or destructive interference occurring. So we get this bigger amplitude of this wave meeting with a slightly smaller one to create an even bigger amplitude. But the idea shows you that two waves adding together will create larger amplitude regions and smaller amplitude regions, which are called the constructive and destructive interference points. So going back to the notes now to remind ourselves of constructive and destructive interference, it says firstly that when two waves of equal amplitude meet in phase, i.e. the crest of one wave meets the crest of another, they combine to form a wave of twice the amplitude. This is called constructive interference. And we can see from the picture here that the two individual waves add together to give a wave of higher energy or higher amplitude as shown here. So we've got what looks like two sine waves here adding together and you can see we've got crest meets crest, trough meets trough, crest meets crest and so on. And when they combine, they'll produce a higher amplitude wave. And here we have destructive interference, which says that when two waves of equal amplitude meet out of phase, i.e. the crest of one wave meets the trough of the other, they combine to form a wave of zero amplitude. This is called destructive interference. And if we look at the picture here, you can see that the two individual waves cancel out to give a wave of zero energy or zero amplitude. And that's what this straight line is showing you, zero amplitude for the wave there. And you can see the two waves overlapping. There's what looks like a sine wave and then a negative sine wave. So that will form a wave of zero amplitude. Lastly, it says to note that if the waves are not of equal amplitude, like in our simulation that we just saw, then complete cancelling out does not occur. And a good practical application of destructive interference is in noise cancelling headphones, just like the Bose headphones that I'm wearing here. Basically, the way these headphones work is that there's a little microphone in them that's listening out for background noise in the room that I'm in, and then what the headphones do is they'll send out the opposite wave pattern to what they're picking up from the microphone into my ears, so that these waves would destructively interfere within my headphones, and therefore I'll hear background noise with very little amplitude or no amplitude at all. And these headphones are very good for cancelling out that noise, which means the waves might even be close to zero amplitude. And that's why they get their name of noise cancellation or noise cancelling headphones. And you get the same technology in wireless earphones and stuff now as well. Now, I'll just show you a quick simulation of how you can form an interference pattern. So just a reminder that if you pass waves through a double slip pattern, you're going to get an interference pattern produced. So let's say we have a monochromatic light source like laser light, which is a coherent source in itself. Then that means that these single waves will be coherent and that they'll pass through this double slit to form two coherent wave sources. So if we click play, 
we'll get our two coherent wave patterns produced and they start overlapping to produce this interference pattern. Now we can label on the diagram to show you the points of constructive and destructive interference. So if we get rid of that just for now, you can see where the waves completely overlap in phase, like directly in the middle here. We've then got another point where the waves completely overlap down here. And then we've got another point up here. So these would be what we call maxima or a maximum. So that is our points of constructive interference, remember. And we've also got the points of destructive interference, which is halfway in between those, where the crests of the waves meet the troughs of the waves. So that would be this point here, this point here, this point down here, and this point up here, which is just off the screen. So if we put our labels back on, you'll see our points of constructive interference in purple there, and then our points of destructive interference in green. And you can see how the points alternate. So we go for constructive interference, then destructive, then constructive, and so on. And same from the middle downwards. So constructive, destructive, constructive, and so on. And remember, this is diffraction going on at the slits, where the waves are bending or squeezing to get through the slits. And that's why we get this bending or diffraction of the waves here. Lastly, going back to the notes, it says here, whilst it is possible to obtain coherent sound waves from two loudspeakers connected in parallel, it is not possible to obtain interference from two light sources due to the random nature of photon emission. Other means of obtaining coherent light waves are used. So I just wanted to show you this picture here comparing sound and light sources. So it says two loudspeakers connected to the same signal generator can produce interference. So we say that these two sources of loudspeakers are coherent because they're connected to the same signal generator and therefore they'll produce waves of the same frequency. However, over this side we have two identical sodium discharge lamps and it says these will not produce interference. And that's because the release of photons from each lamp will be random. So regardless of whether they're connected to the same electrical supply, like the same power supply, we won't get an interference pattern from these two sources because they're not coherent, and therefore the waves produced will have a different frequency. Lastly, it says there are two ways to produce an interference pattern for light. We have division of amplitude and division of wavefront. So division of amplitude involves things like interference produced by thin oil films or thin films, coated camera lenses, which we call anti-reflective coatings or blooming of lenses, and thin wedge interference. And an example of division of wavefront would be something like Young's double slit experiment for light. And it says that we will now consider each of these in turn. So we're going to look at division of amplitude and lots of applications, and division of wavefront in terms of Young's double slit experiment. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.